Hello and welcome to the next video, in which I will show you how to send Spring Boot metrics to Datadog. In this step-by-step -step guide, I will show you everything from creating the Datadog account, setting a new Spring Boot project from scratch, and additionally, how Spring Boot Actuator can help us achieve our goal. But before we start, I have a surprise for you. Thanks to the JetBrains, the company that probably most of you know, but if you don't, then this is the company standing behind all the great tools like IntelliJ, WebStorm or PyCharm and the language that we are using here, Kotlin, uh, we have received a few free JetBrains licenses. And if you'd like to get one, then today it's your first chance. All you need to do is to share this video on LinkedIn, write a few sentences and share the screenshot of that to me on LinkedIn as well. Uh, you will find the link in the description for this video. Among all of you, I'll pick the most interesting answer by the 8th of September 2024 and the winner will get a one-year license for any JetBrains IDE. Without any further ado, let's get to work. What is Datadog? Well, if you came here directly, then I bet you already know what Datadog is and what purpose it will serve in your project. However, for those who hear about it for the first time, let me give you a really short intro. Long story short, Datadog is an integrated platform for monitoring and security. It provides tools for monitoring applications, databases, distributed tracing, logs management, and many, many more. In other words, makes all the things that are not so cool but necessary in production-ready environments a bit less painful. However, what is the most important for us today, it provides tools to collect metrics from our applications so that later we can make use of them. But what exactly are metrics? According to the Datadog documentation, metrics are numerical values that can track anything about your environment over time. And I must admit, I love this definition for its completeness in its simplicity. Because basically, metric is everything in our system that we can assign a number to and track. From garbage collector stats, JVM memory, CPU and request latency, to the average card size. Literally everything. And in this tutorial, we'll see how to send metrics collected automatically by our Spring Boot app, to Datadog. As the first step, let's navigate to the Spring Initializer page at start.spring.io and select all the necessary configurations for our Spring project. Uh, for the project, I would like to use the Gradle DSL, language will be Kotlin, the version I'll go with the latest stable, 3.3.3, uh, project metadata. For the group, I'll set com.coderc, demo, let's change to the data doc, I'll get rid of the description, so the final package name will be com.coderc.datadoc, uh, packaging jar, and Java, we can pick 21, feel free to select here whatever you have installed on your machine. Uh, when it comes to the dependencies, I would like to add the two of them, Spring Web and Spring Boot Actuator. Let's select for spring.web. Uh, actually without the dot, and actuator. And although the first one is quite obvious, it will allow us to, for example, expose REST APIs, the Spring Boot actuator is the one important in, here in terms of metrics. Long story short, Spring Boot actuator provides dependency management and auto-configuration for micrometer, a vendor neutral application observability facade. So, in other words, with that Spring Boot takes care of configuring Meter Registry and the only thing we need to do is to later add the micrometer-registry-system dependency to the build Gradle KTS. So, let me hit Generate. We can see that this is downloaded, so let's open up the directory and let's simply extract the zip package. Right mouse button on it, extract all and I'll hit extract, so we'll get uh, this folder in the downloads. As the next step, let's open up IntelliJ and let's simply open this project. So let's hit open, navigate to where we have downloaded our package and in here I should see, let me refresh maybe, 
and we can see Datadog and select the one with this small black icon near to it. Let's hit OK. I can trust this project. And nextly, we can see that the IDE is opening. Let me get rid of this pop-up. We can see in the bottom part that the Gradle project is building. Uh, all the necessary dependencies are downloaded, so we need to wait a second for that to finish. When the synchronization finished and this pop-up in the bottom part disappeared, let's take a look at our application, main Kotlin Datadog application. Let me close this one and let's try to run it to verify that everything is working as expected at this point at least. Let's wait a second, depending on your machine. It may take a bit longer, the first run at least, but later it should be pretty fast. We can see that Tomcat started on port 8080, which confirms that everything in here is uh, working successfully. Uh, when we were watching the Spring Initializer page, I mentioned that we need to add one more dependency. So let's navigate to build.gradle.kts, Ctrl plus D to duplicate the line, and Let's import the micrometer registry for Datadog. So it will be io.micrometer micrometer dash registry dash data doc. Let me refresh the project. And again, we could achieve exactly the same using the Spring Initializer page. Let me open up it for a second. In here, you could hit add. Um, search for Datadog and uh, we would get this one as well. However, I wanted to emphasize that the other vendors like Elastic or OpenTelemetry can be added in the same manner. So instead of here, I would go OpenTelemetry, let me refresh, and we could get this one as well. Nevertheless, we would like to integrate today with Datadog and Let's bring this one back. Now let's try to rerun the application. And we can see that it failed because we didn't specify the API key for Datadog. So for a moment, I'll comment this line. Shift plus uh, F10, but let's refresh the Gradle project. Shift plus F10. And our application is up and running once again. So let's open up Postman, or this can be curl in your uh, case as well. And let's hit the actuator endpoint. HTTP localhost. The port was 8080. Actuator. And let's take a look right here. So in general, Spring Boot Actuator exposes a lot of endpoints that may be useful uh, in a production-ready environment. Nevertheless, the metrics endpoint that we are interested the most in is not exposed by default. So as the next step, we need to get back to our application and fix that. So let's get back to IntelliJ. Let me stop the application and navigate to the resources. Application properties. The first thing I would like to do will be to change the extension for this file. I personally prefer working with YAML files, but of course the choice is totally up to you. So following, let me uh, convert that to YAML. And we have that working once again. And what we'd like to achieve here will be to expose the matrix endpoint. And to do that, we will need to specify management endpoints web exposure and include. I would like to specify the two things right here. The health that was already exposed and the metrics. Of course, you can use a star to get everything. Nevertheless, I would like to limit, my, uh, limit ourselves to the things that we actually need. Metrics health. Shift plus F10 to run the application. It started on port 8080. So let's open up Postman. Let's hit send. And right now we can see two additional endpoints added. This one, the matrix endpoints, displays a list of available meta names. And when we evoke it, we should see the uh, list 
of matrix. So slash actuator slash matrix. Let's hit send. Excellent. We can see that we got the array of all the metrics that are collected by Spring uh, Boot right now. And basically, this is all we would like to expose later to Datadog. Nevertheless, let's take a look at the details of some metrics. So, for example, let me take application ready time, metrics slash application ready time, sorry, a typo ready time and in here we can see the details of the metrics as well as the actual value that is uh, presented right now so you can see the description that this is the time taken for the application to be ready to service requests seconds and we can see how many seconds it took as the other example uh, let's find the list once again and let's uh, take a look at cpu usage cpu usage so i will copy this value matrix slash process cpu usage and we will get the current uh, cpu usage the recent actually we can see that in the description so with all of that done we can get back to intellij navigate to build gradle kts uncomment the data dog line hit refresh and what we'll need to do next will be to create a Datadog account and get the API key to work with our Spring Boot app. So let me open up browser once again. Type here in doc. Let me scroll up a bit. And this website, Datadog HQ, in here. Let's reject all. Um, and on this page, let's click the free trial and we'll need to set up a new Datadog account. Basically, the good news is that no credit card is required, so we can try that completely for free. We don't need to specify credit uh, card or debit card details. That's the good part. And when it comes to the things that we should specify here, the region, well, this will depend on your location. For me, I will specify Europe, and please remember this step because later it will be important to specify the appropriate URL if we do not go with the default United States. Uh, for the business email, full name, company password, of course, please fill out the appropriate details and phone is not necessary. So let me specify that. Company. Password, of course, and let's hit sign up. Following, we'll need to uh, verify our email, so you need to navigate to your email inbox and find the code. If you cannot find it, of course, please take a look in spam. It may happen that it went there. And when we have our code, let's hit submit. Wonderful. Right here, uh, Datadog will ask us about our stack. We don't need to do that. We can hit simply next. And on the next page, we'll see a bunch of guides how to set up the agent. The one important thing that we are interested in right now is the Datadog API key. Uh, and when you hover over this uh, purple bar, it will be shown to you so you can copy that volume. And here, one important disclaimer from me, the API key is a vulnerable data, so you need to uh, proceed with that cautiously. Do not share this data with anyone. Do not hard code that in the application, even though we'll do that um, in our case. But the preferred way should be in Spring Boot, at least, to provide that as the environment variable, for example. You should never hard code this value in the code so that later it ends up in the uh, GitHub, GitLab, or any Git provider. Nevertheless, again, at this point, let's copy this value and we'll use that in the proceeding step. So let's copy it. Control plus C. So in general, we set up the account. So as the next step, let's get back to our Spring Boot project and let's update the application YAML file. So let's open up the project once again. Application YAML. And in here, under Management Datadog, I would like to specify my API key. So, Datadog, Metrics, Export, 
API key and I'll put the value of my API key. However, alternatively, I can provide that as environment variable. So data doc API key, control plus L. Now in our settings, edit configurations. In here, I need to uh, find environment variables. In the community edition, it looks quite different. However, you should be able to find that pretty easily. Let me remind data doc API key, data doc API key equals, and I'll provide this value. Let me hit OK. And let's rerun the application. Remember that the previous time it was not working as expected. Excellent. We can see that Tomcat started on port 8080. So at this point, I would like to talk about one thing, updating the Datadog URI. So you remember that when we were registering, I thought that if you are using the US value, you don't need uh, to do later anything. However, I selected the European Union. So by default, metrics are sent to the Datadog US site, api.datadoghq.com. And if our Datadog project is hosted on one of other sites, we need to send the metrics through a proxy. So we need to configure the URI accordingly. And given the above, we can do that in here. So under the API key, let's specify the URI. And in here, https api datadog hq.eu. Once again, you don't need to do that when you're using the US region. However, for European region, we must update that. At this point, I would like to show you one more thing, which is technically not related directly to metrics, but I would like to see a bit more logs in here. What I need to do will be to simply go to logging level root debug so that from now on we'll see the logs with the debug severity not only with the info that is by default and additionally i would like to update this step to 10 seconds because otherwise logs will be sent by default if i'm not mistaken to 30 seconds so with these settings that we can here see right here we should see all the logs with the debug severity so we'll see whether the logs are actually sent and in here we will see the step uh, and in here we set the step to 10 seconds so the, the logs and the metrics should be sent every 10 seconds let's see the dogs logs in here dogs and we can see right here that successfully sent 78 metrics to Datadog. So it's even more than we see in the metrics endpoint. Uh, let it run for some time, for example, for, I don't know, two minutes, so that uh, we'll get enough logs to visualize that properly in the Datadog. So some time passed by, so we can get back to our browser and in general, this page should disappear, but if this is not happening, that then we'll need to navigate to the metrics summary. So this will be the app.datadoghq.eu slash metric slash summary. Let me maybe make that a bit smaller. Once again, I hope that you will see that uh, correctly as well. Nevertheless, on this page, we can see all the metrics that have been sent to Datadog from our application. We can see the ones that are related to JVM, etc. So in here, basically on this page, you can see the metadata about the metrics that you sent. Let's take a look, for example, JVM memory used. And in here you can see things, for example, tags that are associated with metrics that you sent to the application. So in general, I strongly recommend to use spend here some time and figure out different options. Nevertheless, for us, let's navigate and let's take a look at the actual values because in here we see only the metadata related to particular metrics, what is sent, and for example, the statistic, blah, 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 the tag key and tag values. We'll get back to that later because I will show you how to uh, send a custom tag at some point. Nevertheless, on the left side, right here, Let's go to metrics sum. Uh, 
sorry, not summary. Let's go to the matrix explorer. And in here, for example, instead of the default value we can see right here, let's go for JVM memory used. And in here, we can see on the dashboard, let me make it a bit bigger. In here, we can see what was happening for the past hour. I can uh, change the interval right here, for example, for past 15 minutes to see a bit closer, closer what exactly we have here. Of course, you can search for all the other uh, metrics that you send right there. For example, CPU, process system CPU usage, for example. And in here, we'll see uh, another dashboard with another values. And basically, that's how metrics work with Spring Boot and Datadog, but please don't close this video yet. I wanted to show you two interesting things that may be useful to you in real life as well. So, the first one will be sending custom tags. And tags are nothing else than an additional metadata you can send with metrics. We saw them already in the metrics summary. When you click on any metric, you will see the tags associated with particular metrics. And why tags are useful? Well, thanks to them, we can later differentiate between different metrics. For example, we can send a tag with the application name so that later we will group metrics by our microservices. Or we can see it set the tag with key environment value and provide a value like dev, staging or production or uh, whatever we have there. So. In general, in Spring Boot, we have uh, several ways to achieve that, and probably the easiest way is to, again, update the application YAML. So as the next step, let's get back to IntelliJ. Let me close this, and I would like to add the additional key here. We have metrics, we have export, and under the management endpoint metrics, I would like to add the tags metrics tags, application, application, my app one, control plus S, let's run the application, and we can see that this setting is not tied to the Datadog, so in general, whether you are using OpenTelemetry, Elastic, or Datadog, you can use the exact same uh, approach to add a custom tag to your metric. Again, this approach is not only straightforward, but also flexible. For example, if we would like to add uh, the environment variable, you could do that with the environment, environment and specified env value, for example, as the environment variable and provide here uh, whether this is dev, staging, etc. So again, this can be hard-coded, but it doesn't have to be this way. Uh, let's stop the application. And following, let's get back to uh, Datadog in here. Again, let's navigate to Metrics Explorer. And this time, again, I would like to select the system CPU usage, but additionally, in here, we can select from and filter this out by the tag value. In here, you can see that we would like to see now only application my amp one So we would like to see only metrics by this tag. If I get rid of that, we can see that we can see also the old ones. In this case, this is useful to um, differentiate between different environments. As the last thing I would like to show you is to basically show you how to stop sending metrics to Datadog. And this one may be useful to, again, set that as environment variable and disable sending metrics in development environment, for example, to uh, limit your usage. And at the same time, the usage equals more or less to cost. So again, let's get back to, to IntelliJ. And under the export, we can set the enabled flag. So enabled and set to false. I can even limit the step to five seconds. Let's rerun the application. And even though we have the step set to five seconds, we should not see uh, anything in the logs related to sending metrics. We can see this is the case. Let's change to true. Shift plus F10, stop and rerun the application. And this time we should see that metrics are actually sent. 
And this is true as well. As I mentioned, we can set that as environment variable. Uh, data dog matrix export enabled. And later you can have that specified as the environment variable. And that's all for this video in which we learned how to send Spring Boot metrics to Datadog. I hope you enjoyed this one and if you do, then let me know in the comment section for this video. Don't forget about your chance to get a one-year license for any JetBrains IDE and see you in the next video. Bye.